This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on cell arrays in MATLAB. Um, so, cell arrays, what they are, are they're kind of like a set of bins, and then they can hold different types of information. And that means uh, in MATLAB, it's places where you can put different types of variables. So you can include scalars, numbers, but you can also do vectors, strings, matrices, and any combination of these. It doesn't need even need to all be the same thing. Um, so as one example, we can define this cell array. And how you define cell arrays is by using um, these curly brackets instead of the square brackets. And what that does is that just tells MATLAB that this is going to be a cell array, not a standard vector or matrix. And so then what we can do is we can put any combination of things. We could put the number 7, a string, a vector from 1 to 10, a matrix of zeros, a 3 by 2 matrix of zeros, um, and the value of pi. And if we do this, uh, we can look at this in two different ways. If we just look at what that cell array looks like in the command window, we see just there's these different compartments. This compartment has a scalar. This compartment has a string. This has um, a 1 by 10 double. This has a 3 by 2 double. Um, and here that's just uh, basically a matrix and it's telling us the dimension of those matrices. We can also look at that visually. There's a function called cell plot and if we do that of a cell array we can look at what these different things are. So we see just a single box like this, that's showing us that it's a scalar. This um, is giving us that string, and this is showing us how many letters are in that string. Um, same here, this is a vector, and this has uh, 10 components in it. And we've got our 3 by 2 matrix here. So this is just visually, um, and this is kind of what I was saying about bins. It's like, here's one bin, here's another bin, and you can just put whatever types of information in there that you need. Um, and so, this might seem a little strange at first, but there's some practical uses for this. Uh, one example, and this is just kind of something that expects to see a cell array and it'll do something for you, is you can use uh, multiple lines in a title of a figure. This also works for X labels and Y labels. Um, so I'm just making up some data here just to get a figure up so we can look at it. Uh, putting some labels on that. I'm also just including in here just for fun that you can use backslash IT stands for italics and then backslash RM stands for remove as in remove that formatting and when you use these as a pair it'll take whatever's in between those two statements whoops and in that this case that's X it will make that X appear in italics on the figure cool we'll do the same thing for Y but what's interesting is the reason we use this backslash RM is because I don't want this units here, the meters units, to be in italics. So we'll see that's not going to be in italics even though X is. Um, now for the new part, the cell array part, what we can do is just define a cell array of strings and so within our title command, and, or we could define this as a separate variable, but we have a cell array. So we're using the curvy brackets and then we have strings. So I'm going to say particle trajectory. And then the next component of my cell array is y equals f of x. And then the next component is, well, I didn't have a great example. We could include some third line here. And then also for fun, I'm including some nice uh, different fancy symbols we can include, uh, which are the, well, you'll see in the figure. Let's run this. So we can create our figure. We have our labels. We can see the italics on the x and y, so that's fun. Uh, but then also we see now we've got this multiple line title. And that's not something that you can just do. Um, you have to use a cell array to tell it to drop to the next line. And so you can actually do this as many times as you want. Um, usually uh, two or three is probably as far as you want to go, depending on what you're doing. Um, and then, of course, uh, on that third line, you could put these really cool symbols. So that's one use of a cell array. And you can do this also on Y labels and X labels. It's the same concept. You just define the cell array and you can do multiple lines. Second example, uh, we could create a legend within a loop. So let's say we're looping through different cases of mass. So I've got this case, this vector of values here. Um, and for this, then, we have some velocity vector, and then we want to determine what the momentum is. So that's what we're doing in our loop. We're calculating momentum uh, for different cases of mass. So what we're going to do 
in terms of our cell array, we want to start by, and this is not necessary, but it'll prevent the dreaded red squiggly underline warning from MATLAB. And this is how you can initialize a cell array, and you just give it a size. And in this case, you just use cell. Um, this is kind of like how you've done with zeros to initialize the size of a vector or matrix. And so we can just initialize a cell array to be the same size as our different cases of mass. And so in this case, that'll create a 1 by 3 cell array. Then once we've done that within the loop, what we need to do, and I'm calculating my momentum here, I'm creating a figure, I'm holding on, so I'm plotting these. And then my legend string, I'm going to store in the ith component. So to reference a cell array, we use the curvy brackets again. So this will put us in the first compartment of our cell array and it's going to put this and what this is doing is this is just piecing together a string that says m equals and then this will be the first case of mass where we need to convert that number into a string and then including the unit here and then as we loop through this will just automatically put these mass values in here and this is nice because if we decide later we want to change these mass cases um, our legend will update with those so it'll always match whatever is in here um, after that, uh, we just are putting some labels on here, and then I'm even putting a two-line title in here for fun, but let's look at what this does. So now you can see my legend here was automatically generated to be the 1, 2, and 5 kilograms. I've got my two-line title, and I've got all my information here, and I did this without explicitly needing to know these values. Um, I had them defined from within my loop. So... Um, that's another use of this. For my last example, cell arrays are a great way to store vector or matrix information from within a loop. So I'm going to use that same example. I'm going to initialize. Um, I'm going to do the legend thing again. I'm going to store my legend string. But I'm also going to initialize a cell array. And just to show you a different way, I could do this as storing uh, cell array by the length of m cases, so 3, comma 1. So this will do a 3 by 1 cell array. We'll start with that, and then what will happen is when we go through our loop, I'll come in here, and at each case, I generated this linear momentum vector, and maybe I wanted to keep each of these cases, because otherwise this just gets overwritten each time. And I don't want to have a new variable that I'm creating each time for this. So I just want to have a record of that so I can get back to it. And if I do this then, so I'll have three components in my cell array, but each component is a vector of momentum values. And then what I can do um, is later on, maybe I had other information I needed to get, but I can go back and then I could use a loop to plot this and go through each cell or maybe I needed these uh, components for calculations or other things but either way I have these now and I can access them at any time I could find the first one the second one the third one um, and so then I could loop through and plot these this way and otherwise this labeling is all the same so we can run this and we're gonna get the same thing uh, but what was different here is now we have this L cell we can see it's a three by one cell array and what this is, is this is the first momentum for the first case of mass, momentum for the second case of mass, momentum for the third case of mass. So then I have these, and then I can use them uh, for whatever I need. Um, and so that's just another practical use for cell arrays, is, uh, in a sense, for storage. Um, they're very practical for that. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. There are more uses of these, but those are the ones that I wanted to cover. Thank you.